little baby Christmas trees. Okay, here we go. But those are Christmas trees. By the by December, they'll be Christmas trees. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I predict that they will not be this year's Christmas tree. Mm. They're too tiny. They're Christmas shrubs. Christmas shrubs. <laughs> They're for the tiny people with the really tiny trees. <laughs> Maybe they're centerpieces. Centerpieces, yeah. I like your idea, Casey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. Centerpieces. Two centerpieces. You stick them back in the ground, they'll grow next year. I love real Christmas trees, but in our house we can't have them because I have asthma and unfortunately fir trees are, are one of the trees I'm allergic to and I'll have a headache the whole time. Crazy, but I have to have the artificial tree, which every year I tell myself, I'm saving a tree, I'm saving a tree. <laughs>
when I was um, when I was your age, I started writing short stories, and that was an escape for me as well. And my mom some, sometimes would get upset if she found out I was still love, and so I would have like my little flashlight, <laughs> and I would just you know hide, you know, and I'd be writing and scribbling away a story, and um, so I would write little short stories at night. Um, Sometimes I get poetry going in my head at night, yeah, I love and it just flows. And I, I know that if I don't get up and I I don't write it in the morning, it's going to be gone. So and uh, yeah, I like doing that. Another creative spot that I have is in the shower. My best ideas come to me in the shower and yeah, in bed. Especially because you go, you sing in the shower. Yeah, and I come up with some songs in the shower. But I don't know how to write music though. <laughs> like for me, like I would, I would play my guitar and I'd be in the shower like, hey, it'd be good. So I'd try to write some, something down. So. You're playing your guitar in the shower? <laughs> oh no, before, <laughs> I, before I shower. <laughs> no, my guitar would be gone by the <laughs> it'd, it'd be no more guitar. It'd be, uh, it'd be probably, I'd, I'd put it in the front yard and be going to the <laughs> And that would be a fun sight for my parents to see. But I come up with song ideas in the shower. That's very musical in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just when when I'm by myself, even even if it's just maybe out to school or something, if I'm just sitting by myself and I'm just watching people or yeah. examine or just think about something or have my focus on one, one thing, I pretty much just I can pretty zone out anything. Right. I just have myself think by myself. I I think that's what I I like to do a lot though. A lot. <laughs> I think I basically survived my teenage years by reading a lot and writing and just doing anything that was creative that took me away from the stuff that I was having to deal with every day. Because life for me was not very fun at home. Yeah, and so, yeah. Especially when you're in high school, you get all this pressure on you. Yeah. You know, like, what do you want to be? What are you going to do with your life? And you got to figure it out. And, and sometimes you make a lot of mistakes along the way before you actually figure out what you want to do. And there's no rule that says, by the time you graduate high school, you know what you're going to do with your life. Some people do, some people don't. Some people spend their whole lives figuring out what they want to do. And they have a whole lot of fun doing it because they try a bunch of different things and they get to experiment with different stuff. Yeah. You know, we're not all knowing of what we want. You never know so this one little situation can change. Our well, video was on track to be a NASA engineer, and then um, she. What was the pivotal moment for you, Vivian? Uh, my 11th birthday, we had gotten our first DVD player, and you decided that I was old enough to realize that the Ring Race and the Lord of the Rings Fellowship of the Ring weren't scary anymore. So I saw it, and I watched some behind the scenes footage for Lord of the Rings, and that's what sparked my passion for filmmaking. I love, I'm, I'm in love with Lord of the Rings, I mean, mm -hmm. practically, I'm so captivated by it, and that's why even my dad, you know, they bought the DVDs, and we're totally in love with Legolas, woo! After me with Zaragon, I love Zaragon. Oh, you're gone. Oh, I love Yeah, you. being a partisan, I love the time. Oh my god. <laughs> I had this fear of bridges, uh, bridges going over water, and I just, it's this irrational fear. I'm always afraid that the car, something's going to happen and the car's going to end up in the water. And so I'm afraid of going over bridges. And every time we would go over the Venetia Bridge, you would go, now just think of Eagle's eye, just think of Eagle's eye. <laughs> and I would hear thinking of those beautiful blue eyes of his, and I would get through the bridge. And it took me a few years to actually reach the point where I could now go through it and not even think about it anymore. But the Loma Prieta earthquake did that to me. It scared me a lot. That the new footage of the bridges and stuff just mm -hmm. terrified me. And I already had a fear of it, so it just. Uh, yeah. Look at that view. Oh, that view. Wow.